And Derek, we're good when you give me the green light. And we're all set over here, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Uh, welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled uh, town council meeting for Monday, May 17th. Uh, hopefully this will be one of the, the last couple ones that we will have uh, via Zoom, but we are via Zoom per the governor's executive order. And um, if Councilman Forrest, oh, as you're eating, I was going to just have you go up. <laughs> I'll give you one second. If you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Just come along. It would be my honor, Mayor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Forrest. And I do see Sue on. So if you could uh, record the attendance for those of us on tonight. Okay. Um, Councillor Biggs, Councillor Flanagan, here. Councillor Forrest, here. Councillor Hill, here. Councillor O'Connor, Councillor Pelletier, here. Councillor Pentelo, here. Deputy Mayor Mazzarella, here. And Mayor Rell, here. Okay, thank Great. you. No, thank you, Sue. We appreciate that. And um, on the agenda tonight, we do have a presentation. This is from the Friends of the Nature Center. And uh, I see Kathy Bagley, uh, head of our Parks and Rec, who works closely with the Eleanor Buck Wolf Nature Center. And um, I don't know if you want to start it off, Kathy, or if you have some folks uh, from the um, Nature Center who will be speaking on behalf of the uh, uh, proposed pavilion that's uh, slated for back there behind the building. Sure, I can start. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Good evening to everyone. With me this evening is uh, another member of my staff, Patrick Tellman, who's our youth development manager and who also oversees the operation of the Nature Center. And with us tonight are two members of the Friends of the Nature Center, Patricia Yagman, who's the president of their board of directors, and Tom Linden, who's a member of the board of directors. And they're here tonight to talk with you about their proposal to donate a pavilion for the Nature Center's use. And I'm gonna give you just a little background on it. And then um, if they, they can also speak, and then if you have questions, what this pavilion is set up to do is it will be set up to be an outdoor education classroom where our, our children, our adults, our families would have opportunities to take advantage of it while it was outside and take advantage of the environment around them. The neat thing about it is that it can be used in all weather because the Nature Center is always teaching people about the outdoors. So this would become really a year round facility that we could use outdoors we might have to shovel a little snow, but um, it would have the ability to give us another teaching area that's a little protected by the weather, but also available to be used outdoors. We brought this um, proposal to the park board uh, at their April meeting this year, and they voted to support it and uh, send it to council for their review and discussion. So I just wanted to let you know that we're excited about this offer from the Friends. And to give you a little history, the Friends of the Nature Center have been an incredible strong supporter of the Nature Center over many years. And um, both financially and with all their volunteer hours and the Friends ideas with programming. So it's been a terrific partnership with the town and with the friends. And they were instrumental in really helping to get the Nature Center located uh, where it is today. Um, the pavilion itself would be about 14 feet by 20 feet. 
and would be located, if you can picture the Nature Center on Prospect Street, it would be behind the Nature Center. There's a little garage there that we use for storage. And then on the other side of that, it would fit in very nicely, kind of running parallel to the soccer field that's there, but far enough away that it's certainly not gonna be impacted by it at all. Um, and the other thing with this pro proposal is that it's been, they've been talking about it with staff for a while now. And also we've um, consulted with our staff in the building department and the planning department to make sure that what is suggested to uh, be put there, uh, that it will meet all the town codes. So that's also a work in progress. And um, that's kind of a, just an overview of the proposal. And I would leave it up to one of the friends, uh, either Tom or Pat, if they'd like to say something. Sure. Pat, did I see you raise your hand, Pat? You're muted. Yeah. Okay, I got it there now. Go. <laughs> I'm not used to this, <laughs> but I want to uh, extend my thanks to the town council for the privilege of presenting our project. I uh, certainly appreciate the town support through all the years um, that we've been working on whatever project we're working on. Um, the friends have been committed to this project since 2019 when Patrick Tellman um, found a need for more space in an outdoor protective area. Uh, COVID kind of put a halt on it, but the Friends um, fundraised for the major portion and we're still applying for grant monies. Um, the Friends are more than willing to help. But we are definitely leaders in the community. We strive to enrich the lives of the people in town. We have raised $17,000 towards the pavilion so far. Uh, the cost is 20,000 plus we will need extras for the um, accessories. Uh, we are applying uh, now to the Weathersfield Greater Together Com Commission uh, for more funding. Um, and we need to be able to provide the ADA access, uh, picnic tables, maybe some side panels to protect from when it's really raining hard. Um, and the pavilion will serve as a shaded, protective outdoor enclosure. It'll be used for camps, educational programs, birthday parties, and even the townspeople for their gatherings. We could work that out. Um, judging by the help and support we received from the community, the residents of Weathersfield are all in favor for having a pavilion at the Nature Center. And we do consider it a gift to the town. And I thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. I don't know if Tom wants to say anything. I'm raising my hand. <laughs> you see your two dogs, Tom. Some Sometimes my camera works, sometimes my camera doesn't. So you get to look at my dogs instead of me, which is a better thing. Um, thanks. Um, Kathy did a very good job explaining and, and so did Pat. So just a little bit more, as Pat was saying, we have over 50 people who donated already. We kicked off the fundraiser at the very end of March and within three weeks, we had raised $17,000 plus donations for materials. Um, to get this project done. Our budget for the whole project was $30,000, the cost to purchase and have the pavilion installed and for us to do the preparatory work for it. So digging out the base, Dave Ambrose at Weathersfield Construction is donating all the gravel base material. It's gonna go on a concrete pad. We're looking at either Cloder Farms or Carefree Small Buildings to purchase this from, and we're gonna purchase and have them install it rather than have a bunch of us who think we know what we're doing install it. <laughs> Better to let the professionals do it. Um, a couple of the other things, there is electricity out to the garage that we hope we're gonna be able to tap off of that so that there will be electrical outlets out there so that anybody using it for a program, whatever, they can have electricity out there. 
We want to put a light in the ceiling just so that there's light there at nighttime for security reasons, because it's kind of dark back there. Even though you can see it very clearly across Mount Arrow Field from the road going in, we, we we're thinking that it's going to be the, in everybody's best interest to have a low light in there so that it's lit up at night. Um, what else have we got going on? The, the um, I, I, had, I dropped off our brochure last week. I don't know if everybody at council got that in their packet yet or not, but we have a brochure and on the cover of that brochure, we had shown a wooden timber frame type um, pavilion, kind of the thing you would see like in a state park or a national park. So just in case you see the, the brochure, we had already gotten feedback on that, that it's an attractive nuisance because it's a great thing to climb up onto and into. So we've kind of changed, we, we changed that idea. The pavilion we're going to go with is going to be a vinyl pavilion, which will be, you know, low maintenance. There's really no such thing as maintenance free. It'll be a vinyl pavilion. You won't be able to climb in and up into the rafters and stuff like you would see if you if you actually get a chance to see our brochure. Um, other than that, we're, we're excited to get this done. Our biggest issue right now is unfortunately with material shortages and lots of people buying outdoor stuff. We have a 26 week lead time from the time of placing our order to this thing being delivered and installed. So six full months from the day we order it. So we're ready. We have the funds in place. We have over the $17,000. The Friends is gonna kick in the rest of the money. We're gonna continue to fundraise for it to replace the money we're putting in, but we have the money right now to do this. We're, we're ready to go. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. So, sounds good. Uh, any questions from council members to either Kathy, Pat, or Tom on this? Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, maybe Tom would be the best person to answer. I'm not sure, but uh, <clears throat> are, is the town going to be involved in the installation or the preparation, the concrete work? And I'm curious about the ADA requirements. Are we going to have to have paved sidewalks from from the parking lot to the pavilion, or what are the rules for that? So for ADA, there is a gravel path that leads from the parking lot back to about where the point is where this is going in. There's a little side path that goes up to the parking lots behind um, the ambulance facility. And then from that point down, all the way down into the park, it's paved. It would be nice if we could get it paved from the parking lot to that point. Um, I'm talking with Roger Tabshe at General Paving about them possibly coming in to be able to do that for us. We will connect from the path system there to the, to the location of the pavilion so that you can be on a path all the way to the pavilion for ADA. And, and uh, as far as the town's contribution, or is town staff going to be involved with the uh, excavation, the site prep work, and that kind of thing? We haven't talked in great detail with Kathy and about that yet, but we're kind of hoping that it would be something similar to what they did at Loretta's Dream, that the town dug out the rough area where the pad is going to go, and then we'll get the stone from Dave to be put in place and figure out who's going to compact it. Um, we're working on trying to get some local people that can do the little bits and pieces. You know, we need to um, put in concrete piers that it's going to sit on. So we're, we're organizing that stuff. And unfortunately, we now have six months to get that done. <clears throat> Thanks, Tom. Any other questions for Pat or Tom or Kathy? Okay, thank you. And, um, you know, kind of just following up on what uh, the deputy mayor had asked um, with regard, now, do you plan on putting a, a concrete slab underneath? I'm kind of putting, now that I'm thinking about it, my HDC 
former HDC hat on. Uh, but uh, is it going to be a concrete slab or are you going to leave it stone underneath? Concrete. Oh, okay. So yeah. somebody, to, so most likely, you know, donated concrete for, for that. And then it's a cloder farm prefabricated. So there's no building that's going right. to be required. Correct. Right. And then uh, electrical hookups, um, maybe donated, you know, electrical work to tap into what is existing on the garage back there. Yes. Okay. I gotcha. Yep. And, um, and Kathy did mention that uh, she's working with both the building department and uh, planning and zone or planning department on following any kind of rules, regulations, whatever stipulations need to be put in place for it. So, okay. And if I could follow up on that mayor, we're also, if, um, if as we move forward, uh, we would also be going to planning and zoning. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Good. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Just one more quick question. Um, I, the location, I don't believe, would impact any potential other fields or anything that's going to be developed. I was just wondering, like, if the Millwoods Master Plan has any other ideas for that spot. I don't believe so, but I was just wondering if anybody looked at that. Hmm. We we always do look at that anytime we are looking at doing things in Mill Woods. And for a while there, there was a tree there. So we weren't kind of looking at putting anything there. And then unfortunately the tree had to come down. And so that opened up the space, if you will, and actually made it a really nice space to, to put it in. Thank you for mentioning that, Kathy. So I'm actually looking at kind of an aerial view of it. And it's between the garage and that new octagonal shaped um, ball. Um, I don't know what it's even called, but <laughs> whatever is in there, it's some type of new game kids are playing. Yeah, so that was an, an Eagle Scout project for us. Yep, yep. And uh, so it would be in between that project and the... Um, the garage back there or storage area. Gotcha. Okay. I do see the tree and I do see the path that leads um, through there. And then you would want to connect somehow um, that path to an ADA compliant uh, access to the pavilion. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. I spend three nights a week on Montanero field. So I will take a look next time my daughter's playing soccer. We're usually sitting right behind that bench right there. Okay. Well, if there's no further questions, thank you for the presentation. And then I guess, Gary, is there any, is, is there something that we would need to vote on at the next meeting if there's a presentation for this tonight? Would we have to receive a gift the town would receive a gift from the, the. Oh, if you were to if you were to accept a um, accept a donation, then yeah, that that would be the next action. Um, if if that's in fact the next step, um, and you could uh, condition it, the motion, you know, pending whatever you want, right? So, pending approval from appropriate departments or appropriate commissions. Okay, and then Tom had mentioned twenty six weeks lead time when would you guys want to break ground on this you're gonna leave that to me aren't you thanks pat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, our our original plan was that we wanted to have this thing in the ground by the end of next month so that they could use it for summer camp but that one went away when i called up clover farms two months ago um Six months from now is the end of October. Now it's a prefab structure. If we got the piers in the ground and the concrete pad ready, it could be installed anytime. It could go in in December. It could go in in January. Um, there's no rush to get it done by then. 
but like Kathy said, it's a it, it'll be an outdoor space that can be used year round. And I believe Pam takes her little preschool kids out in the middle of winter <laughs> and they go out and they view nature in winter because it happens 365 days a year. So if we could get the prep work done in the fall and be ready for it whenever it gets delivered, that's that's what we'd like to do. We'd like to get it as fast as we can get it. Okay. That's good to know kind of a timetable so that we can plan accordingly for you guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Any other questions or comments at all? Mm -mm on this. Good. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And my wife just texted me that my son's game hasn't started yet, which was supposed to start at seven o'clock at Millwood's lighted field. So I may even get a chance to go see it tonight. <laughs> the area. Well, we're we'll happy to keep you keep the meeting moving right along to get you there. Yeah. Baseball under the lights at Millwoods. Got to love it. Okay. Uh, moving on. So we've got a uh, couple people I see uh, call in. Are they uh, callers in for us, yep. Gary? So first caller that I saw was 860 8784688. And then you have to hit star six to unmute yourself. Hello, everyone. How are you tonight? Doing well. Good, good, good. This is uh, Claudio Bori again from 639 Highland Street in Wethersfield. Just calling up to say that uh, <clears throat> hopefully the council keeps up with the events that are going on in the state and in the nation. Uh, as I said before, we are experiencing, I think, a period of stagflation. And I think it's only gonna get much, much worse before it gets better. I'm sure we'll see a jobs report that is pretty horrible for the month of May. And we also will have inflationary pressures continue to grow. They grow at the current rate. The rate of uh, inflation for the year will probably be uh, over 10%. The unemployment numbers will probably maintain at a constant level. And the economy will not be coming back roaring like everyone says. So I want to reiterate once again that now is not a good time to be <clears throat> thinking about uh, escalating costs. <clears throat> I'd also like to say that at one of the last meetings, someone mentioned that, you know, we had some good news that <laughs> our um, funds, our pension funds are funded at 50%. Well, if that's the case, then when the chief retires, we should be giving him 50% of his pension. It's, it's very, very, to me, irresponsible for the state and for local municipalities to be burdening our grandchildren with and children with debt by just postponing the actual uh, things that you have to pay for by, by making them go further out in time. Governor Lamont has put our debt out to the year of 2045. And you know, when I walk around and I think about it and I just think about how much I pay now and how much I get taxed, and I can't even take that off on my taxes because when when Trump put out his tax cuts for the wealthy, uh, I don't even get to do my um, uh, full taxes because of salt limitations. So I pay tax on dollars that I don't even see, tax on top of tax. So I'm gonna reiterate once again that the town council steps up to the plate and remembers why we voted for them and makes this budget to not only be flat, but does what a lot of the other surrounding towns are doing are actually cutting their costs because we're in an unsustainable situation with inflation outside 
and inflationary pressures from municipal and state contracts that the taxpayer doesn't sit in on. Thank you and have a nice night. Thank you, Mr. Boria. And I realized that the I couldn't get the timer to come up on the screen, so I was running it on my phone. I, I am too. For some reason, it's uh, having a little hiccup over here, uh, but it's probably user. Next phone number is 860-563-6923. Uh, good evening. This is Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, I fully agree with what Claudia was just talking about uh, regarding uh, the, what's coming, what we're going to be looking at in the very near future regarding this economy. Uh, just consider the fact of the trillions of dollars that have just been funneled into the economy, trillions that were not made by people working. They were made by creation of money. They call it borrowed money. And there, there's nothing to back it up. And what it's really doing is it's going to take everybody's money that's out there in banks and wherever else, all that cash that people own, and it's going to devalue it as well, which is what Claudia was talking about. It's part of that inflation animal that we're going to see that's coming along. And every dollar that we have in our pocket is going to be worth less and less. And as that inflation ramps up, we're going to have less and less money. And, and we taxpayers who pay so much in taxes, and Claudia is right, we, 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 we have a lot of expenditures that we can't even claim. And the same with you guys. Same with you, every one of you that works. There's a lot of expenditures there that you put out and you can't claim it against your tax to reduce your tax because, because of that $10,000 salt thing that was created a few years ago. And we need to find some ways of cutting our costs, not continue spending and, and keep thinking of we're going to beat the uh, recession by spending our way out of it. We're going to beat it by stopping spending as much as we can. I know you can't stop everything, but you got to consider the fact that there are areas that you could lean on and, and, and bring in more money, um, find ways of cutting back money. Now, you folks have been on, uh, you know, the last election was what, 16 months ago, 18 months ago. And what have I heard about cutting costs? Very little. Yeah, you got one, you got a $62,000 reduction in your last budget. Now what are you going to do? You've got to come up with horrendous amounts of money this time to reduce your budget. Just think, I've been talking to you folks over the last number of meetings about the school, how you can cut back. I talked to you about the, the Keisha farm, where you could sell lots to create a uh, over 55 plus community, which would, would generate new revenues. But let's come back to, a, to the fact of uh, the discussion that I had with you not long ago regarding the schools. We, you know, we've gone through the coronavirus using, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the, the, the students were staying home, learning. Remote and learning. That, Remote you know, there, there was, what, am I done? No, I was just saying it's remote learning. Uh, let me continue. And there was an article in this morning's paper, Will Pieces of Remote Learning Remain? It was on the front page of the Hartford Current. I really recommend everybody to read that because in there they're talking about sections or pieces of that virtual learning should continue or will continue. And there's communities like, this, like Manchester uh, School District that says it's likely that they're going to provide a fully virtual option in the fall for their students going forward. This means they're going to find a way, they're finding a way of, of cutting back. In the same article they talk about, and I didn't know this, but Massachusetts already has um, offered its students two fully remote public school options, the TEC Connections Academy 
uh, Commonwealth Virtual School through Pearson. I don't know who Pearson is. And the Greenfield Commonwealth Virtual School. Both programs were established years before the pandemic. And, and, and this gives equality to our students, as the article also talks about. If the student was in Avon, Greenwich, Bridgeport, uh, Harford, they're getting the same learning from these programs that could cut our costs in running our schools. So please, you know, if Claudio is talking about cutting costs or finding ways of reducing taxes, this is something you should really consider going out into the future and get it ramped up. Don't rely on the superintendent to bring it to you. He's got, an, he's got a kingdom he's got to take care of. And, and, and that kingdom needs to come down. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. We appreciate it. We've got a second period after uh, the meeting for uh, another five minutes of comments. So we'll continue on with the agenda. Uh, council reports, members with council reports tonight. It's been a quiet couple weeks. Okay, council comments. Anybody with council comments? Councilman Forrest. Just briefly want to follow up on um, comments that I did make a couple weeks ago with Gary Evans and <clears throat> some of the state of some of our roads around town and also the man uh, utility hole covers and the water hole covers um, that are on the uh, many of the streets, including the Celestine Highway are not at the same grade. You could probably possibly take a look at that. Also Marsh Street looks have been re pretty rough shape and down to, um, and down to I-91 as well. So if you just take a look at that, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually I did notice Silas Highway after uh, the last meeting, I think I did drive down, if I'm not mistaken, almost in front of the town hall um, is where that dip is right there. Yep, there's another one, big uh, utility will cover right in the, in the intersection of Route 3. Not a great place, but, and that's not exclusive, those are just having me too. Mm -hmm. Okay, if Gary, if we could have Derek probably follow up with either MDC um, if they are the ones responsible for any of that, because I remember the work that was done on Main Street where Main and Wells connects, I believe they came with a, their own contractor to come in and, and take a look at some of those. If we could do that. Yep. Any other council comments at all? Okay, uh, I'll be brief, uh, but I did wanna to talk to actually a couple of things that uh, are going on in town. And uh, you know, I know this is uh, kind of a different time period. Everybody likes the excitement of spring, but uh, I think with the uh, relaxation of some of the governor's executive orders coming up on uh, May 19th, as well as the CDC guidelines on mask wearing, um, both indoors and outdoors, uh, you know, spring is always uh, a good time of year. We're starting to see, you know, activity on our playgrounds and whatnot and people out and about. Um, I just got to give kudos to uh, not only our shopkeepers in, in Old Weathersfield and uh, along the Silestein Highway, uh, but families in general. Uh, just looking at the buzz of the activity that is going on, you know, everybody kind of missed it last spring at this time where everything was blooming and, and people wanted to get outside and uh, there was apprehension with everybody. But looking at um, this weekend over on uh, Main Street, it really was just a buzz of activity. In fact, we had police uh, presence there just to make sure that, um, you know, I don't want to say crowd control, but just to ensure the safety of uh, pedestrians that were there. Um, I stopped and talked to a couple folks, uh, and actually the first four or five people that I talked to weren't even from Weathersfield. So that is a, uh, a great indication of what we are doing to attract people into, uh, into our town, uh, as well, the ball fields and, you know, my hats off to, uh, to Sally Katz and her team, uh, did hear some comments early on in the, the spring season about the height of grass and the playing conditions of some of the fields. Um, and sure enough, uh, two, three weeks later, 
uh, listening to some of those same exact parents about how well the, uh, the fields are being maintained and uh, the, the fact that families are happy now to get uh, their, their kids out and about in both uh, you know, some youth activities as well as uh, some of our um, town sports um, is a, a great indication on you know, what's going on in town. Uh, also with what's going on in town and many of you guys uh, have seen the uh, notice on the town website for the public forum for tomorrow night's uh, chief um, I guess it would be the search committee wants to get public input from that that is 6 p.m tomorrow night on zoom uh, again it's uh, on the town's website uh, on the header page if you get onto that you can actually register on uh, the, the town site and get the credentials to uh, either call in or be on the Zoom for that. Uh, this week, we're also celebrating WEX. Um, they have a PEP, uh, People Empowering People graduation. Uh, this year uh, is the first year they didn't do it last year uh, because of COVID. And um, it's gonna be this Wednesday, 6 p.m. at Loretta's Dream, actually another pavilion. Uh, in Mill Woods. Uh, if you guys are available, I know Kim Bobbin has uh, worked hard with um, Janine Barrasso and uh, a couple other folks to make that program a success. That is going on again, 6 p.m. this Wednesday night. Uh, a couple other events that are going on, the Webb Dean Stevens Museum that was uh, just recently awarded the um, grant from the State Bond Commission has completed the Holcomb Education Center at their uh, museum. Uh, some of us on the council um, were privy to a tour of that facility and uh, all the work that they had done, uh, unbelievable asset to, uh, to that museum, a welcoming center, as well as some office space, uh, community space, and they tied it in very nicely with the historic theme of, uh, of the museum. That is actually slated for a June 4th grand opening that weekend, the 4th, 5th, and 6th, they'll be open 10 to 4, both Friday and Saturday, and 1 to 4 on Sunday, free admission uh, into that. So if anybody's listening and uh, would like to take a look at the, the new um, visitor center, as well as all the additions that they've done, um, please do come by the Webb Dean Stevens Museum, uh, the 4th, 5th, and 6th of, uh, of June. Um, getting also back to business, uh, as I was saying, Finally, the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, with the um, easing of restrictions is going to have their back to business uh, event. That is on Wednesday, June 9th, uh, I believe, 7 p.m., if I'm not mistaken, at the Weathersfield Country Club. Uh, there are tickets that are available to purchase. So if um, people are, are looking to get back out and in a safe environment to be able to talk to some of the folks from the chamber, and members of the chamber, uh, as well, uh, you know, some of the developments that are going on in town, um, please do so. Again, that's um, Wednesday the 9th at 7 p.m. Um, and then finally, you know, speaking on some projects that are going on in town, and I, I did hear from Matt about the um, paving conditions. Uh, I believe spring paving has started. Uh, that is, uh, if you remember, we adopted or passed the uh, um, spring paving program for this would be not north of Knott Street almost over by Goodwin Park. Uh, there's probably about four roads that are being repaved um, due to some water conditions that deteriorated the uh, uh, existing pavement. So the, the spring paving program is going um, and getting started right now. Hopefully the uh, impact on residents and motorists in the area will be minimal and they will be able to wrap that up pretty quickly. So just a couple updates uh, on what's going on in town. And if anybody else has anything further to say, if not, we'll just move right into council action. I believe we do have a couple resignations and one walk-in resignation. So I'll start off with uh, agenda item B1A. I believe it's a resignation from the committee with, uh, for people with disabilities. Yeah, I'll make a motion to Oh, accept. sorry. Nope. Yep. I can't go. Excuse me, Mr. Clark. Deputy. As I'm jumping ahead of myself, sorry, we do have a town manager's report and a uh, town clerk communications. Sorry, Gavin, uh, uh, Gary, 
I did I see your time with it. I was thinking about like, should I let him skip me? Because I, you know, I, I actually want you to get your son to your son's game. Um, no, I didn't hear any point of order. We can move right along. <laughs> no, both the so we need to hear from Sue and Gary. I apologize for that. So I'll try to do uh, I'll try to do justice and go quickly. Although I never seem to. Um, so. Uh, Positive news, right? We've been seem to have this uh, trend in the positive direction related to COVID numbers. Um, the week before we were in orange, it looks like uh, as of last Thursday, we dropped to yellow with approximately nine cases per 100,000 residents. The cutoff being 10 would put us into orange. So we're just slightly below um, orange, we're in yellow. We're gonna monitor that to make sure we're heading, continue to head in that positive direction. Um, as such, I'm currently working with staff in incident Connecticut Central Health District to review our townwide reopening of facilities as well as programming options for those things that aren't currently opening. Um, again, trying to get those up and running as soon as possible and also trying to work on um, systems here within town to maybe resume back to, um, to the way we used to do things. Um, every week we get a little bit closer and you know, then I wait to hear from the governor on what his next steps are gonna be or, or clarifica clarification on executive orders. Um, as you saw, um, and Kathy was kind of on before, I should have asked her to kind of chat about this, but parts and rec programming is um, up and available. The new brochure hit and they started doing online um, uh, acceptance of applications on the 12th. My understanding is we had record numbers of individuals sign up for programming. Um, uh, a considerable amount of people immediately signed up on the first day and those numbers haven't stopped. They continue to trend, um, but I'll talk more about that in a minute. Spring sports are in full swing, um, I guess somewhat of a pun intended, and we're doing our best to get um, as much as we can back online for all services. Budget process, uh, as council is aware, we're waiting updates in, on the interim guidance that was provided from the Department of Treasury related to the federal funds that we received. Um, for the American Recovery Act um, or Rescue Act. I confuse the two um, because these funds have some specific usage and specific language as to how we can use them. Uh, we're still waiting for clarification to make sure we use them correctly. And within the next few weeks, we'll have that information so we can move forward with our budget process. And uh, so summer brochure I had mentioned already, please, uh, for those of you out there watching this, you can also go to the Parks and Rec Facebook page to see what else is trending and what else is available, such as camps, um, fitness classes, nature center, senior center programming, therapeutic recreation, what we're hoping to be available soon. Swim lessons being a big one, uh, as well, well as anyone who may know of anyone who's interested in becoming a lifeguard where we've added extra classes for lifeguard training. My understanding is there's a shortage statewide of individuals looking to become lifeguards and uh, we're really pushing um, to fill that number. Uh, other fun things, fun facts. A few weeks ago, the council uh, authorized the town manager to execute some contracts to apply for funding for the weather for through the Weathersfield Heritage Commission to receive Connecticut Humanities funding uh, for $4,999. I'm happy to tell the council that we, uh, we received the funds. Uh, we were approved and, um, well, we haven't officially received them yet, but we did, we were successful in that grant. Um, the, uh, a few things just because uh, the, the mayor uh, mentioned it as well as Councillor Forrest and just so you're all aware in terms of engineering and things that are going on there. Um, you might have noticed the construction work related to uh, the MDC at church and not the water main project is nearing completion. The contractor has recently striped Church Street and Knott Street to provide 11 foot wide travel lanes and shoulder areas that uh, are narrower to um, from a visual perspective, hopefully will um, encourage slower vehicle speeds and also create some protection for bicycle safety. Um, and other than that, the project is complete. Um, the town uh, is also in the process of looking at some old Weathersfield, the old Weathersfield safety improvement funds that they received for about $400,000 as part of the um, community connectivity grant. And uh, had just recently hosted a virtual public meeting. Hold on, multitasking here and letting people into the meeting. Um, other things of interest, Bell Pond Dam improvements. Um, we're in the middle of
of executing agreement between the town and DEEP for that just shy of a million dollars in state funding that uh, has been received need to be finalized so that we can complete survey design permitting and repair of that existing dam. And um, the, uh, for those of you who recall, the, uh, about six months ago, the town was successful in receiving uh, funding for the Great Meadow Road bike pedestrian improvements, which would be, um, so the town had to do a portion of that to, uh, as kind of part of our in-kind match. Uh, the staff has completed the survey work that needed to happen around Great Meadow Road from Hart Street to the, to the Putnam Bridge uh, for an installation of new sidewalks and safety improvements that tie to the DOT project that's going on over there, the trail project. And um, the mayor had mentioned spring paving program has begun. Um, they are in full swing with, um, I think they're currently still grading in the Albert Ave area. Um, and they're scheduled to do re reclaim work in the Goodwin Park Road next, and they'll kind of move down the list of projects over there. Um, other than that, we are street sweeping, curb repair, pothole repair, tree removal, um, general park maintenance, and preparation for late spring going into the summer. Um, and uh, I'll tell you what, just in the interest of keeping things moving. Uh, the mayor had already mentioned the stakeholders meeting tomorrow night at six o'clock. Um, for access to that, you can either call in or Zoom. Please see the town website. And that's all I have to report at the moment. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Anybody with any questions for Gary or anything? Comments for Gary? Seeing none, okay. Uh, Sue. Hey, um, since about mid-April, we've been working on um, last year's grant. So um, in that time, we've had approximately 400 of our volumes scanned from um, 600 to 994. The 900 series um, should be close to being able to be viewed um, on the website for the land records. And we're trying to close the gap from uh, 1991 to 2003. So we're getting closer um, to doing that, which is great. M make more of the land records available to um, the searchers and the public. And also we're gearing up for the upcoming dog season. So um, we have about uh, close to 1600 postcards that we'll be getting out um, right, right before uh, the Memorial Day weekend. And uh, last year we did real well with um, doing a lot of the renewals through the mail and um, we should be able to do that again this year as well. Great, okay, thank you, Sue. Thank you. Now moving on to council action. Uh, Acceptance of resignations, council item B1A. And I believe we have two resignations. Uh, one resignation. Well, oh, do we have a walk? We may have a walk in. That's an appointment. Uh -oh. well, Hang on, Sue. Do we have a resignation from the insurance committee? as well? Um, I just have the um, appointment from the insurance committee. Okay. So what you had sent over for the resignation from boards and commissions for, oh, okay. John Dolan had resigned 630 and that's, that's the vacancy for Alex Clark. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. He's already designed. See it. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Elaine Zeller, 39 Old Mill Road from the Weathersfield Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities. The term was 7119 to 63021. Oh, okay. Pat seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 
Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Okay. Now we can go to the appointments. Uh, council item B2B. I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Diane McAdams to the Fair Rent Commission uh, as an alternate, uh, 108 Eastern Drive, for the term of 5-17-21 to 6-30-23. And also to appoint to the Insurance Committee, Alexander Clark, 74 Timber Trail, to fill a vacancy, a uh, term of 51721 to 63026. Second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Aye, silent. Okay. There is council actions on appointments and resignations. I don't believe there are anything under unfinished business. No bids, no other business ordinances. So we'll move on to approval of minutes. There's a couple minutes and if everybody had a chance to look at their packet, there are three workshops, budget workshops for April 21st, the 26th and the 28th, as well as the um, most recent council meeting on May 3rd. So if everybody had a chance to look at those, any questions or corrections on those minutes at all? Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it, okay. And we're in the uh, second portion of the public comment section. I think we've got two callers on, Mr. Evans. 860-878-4688. Hello, this is, hello, this is Claudio. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, just um, while I was standing here, I was just thinking about uh, maybe somehow to be able to leverage the, the capabilities of the community. I remember way back when um, in my nuclear physics days, um, I lived in Wethersfield, but I worked uh, as a nuclear physicist at uh, Millstone. And uh, they'd asked me to work with the town. And I don't know if the town of Wethersfield is still the host community for one of the communities around Millstone Nuclear Power Station for uh, <clears throat> evacuation. Uh, and if that's the case, because I remember working with Lee Erdman and Joe Hart and uh, the rest of the team there way back when and setting up a uh, civil preparedness department for the town. I mean, I think I, I bought generators for the community. I did uh, emergency lines, all sorts of things. Well, now that Dominion's there, I don't know if Weathersfield is still the host community for, I think it was the actual host town, Waterford. And um, if that's the case, I don't know if anyone's thought about um, leveraging that capability with both um, FEMA, because FEMA is also the group that's uh, responsible for the local community support. I remember we used to fill out a lot of paperwork to get reimbursement for uh, a lot of things for the community or <clears throat> with Dominion Nuclear Power Station itself or as representatives, because what ends up happening is that they don't have adequate uh, uh, evacuation capability. What will happen is that uh, they'll be forced to shut down and they have to show that every year. And then they do it, uh, you know, drills and rehearsals and things like that. But it's been a long time since I've been involved in that. So that's, that's just a thought of mine of, uh, the capability of being able to leverage certain uh, things that the town might have, looking at different ways and different things uh, instead of your your normal processes, and that's uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Boria. And one more. Next caller is eight six zero five six three. Six nine two 
Good evening again. This is Robert Young. I, I'd like to reiterate a little more on that, that article because uh, it gave me a little chance to um, back and look at it um, while, while other issues were going on tonight. But uh, in there, it talks about that the students, uh, uh, that, that they, they would be able to get into this program by choice. And uh, there, there's a woman that's being quoted in the article uh, where she had had her children in the public school and took them out and put them into a private online curriculum through this company called Pearson. Obviously, she had to pay for it. Then it goes on to say, but Pearson also offers a tuition-free, I don't know what that means either, public school option that can be coordinated with individual states. So obviously, uh, they're able to pipe this information, this, these courses, right into people's homes uh, right across the country uh, as long as you sign up. And, and also, in the article, it talks that there's a, a, a movement in the state of Connecticut to get the state of Connecticut involved in some type of uh, learning like this. And, uh, you, you know, again, I talk about your juniors and your seniors. These are the people who are getting ready to go to college. And let's face it, from what I understand, the town of Wethersfield has a program already for these students, especially the um, seniors, where they're taking – they're taking their college courses while they're also attending the high school, taking high school classes. And during this pandemic, I bet you they were all taking it online. This is something that they're, these young people are tuned in. These young people uh, have, have grown up with computers, and, and they should be able to take this on in a, in a heartbeat. Uh, and if we got half of our seniors and half of our juniors, and believe me, this program is probably not for every student. We know that. So if you even got half of each of your classes, you'd save a, a quite a few courses being taught. You'd be able to free up rooms. You'd be able to, oh, why would we have to renovate a school? Just tear it down because now we'll move our students around and, and fill the the, the better school up that, that can handle more students because other students in that school are now doing online. And, and this is what we should be shooting for. It's, it's a way of reducing taxes, folks. And, and it would be a good way because you're really getting those young people cranked up. You get them cranked up to go to college. You're getting those uh, freshmen cranked up that they're looking at the fact of uh, – Wow, when I get to, to be a junior, when I get to be a senior, I'll be able to work for, you know, take my classes from home. It, it gives them an incentive and for those that want to do it. And, and, and if we got half of each of our classes, I think we would find ourselves with some good dividends. But all we need now is, is somebody from our town to take it on to go and find who these people are. And if you went and call or contacted the writer of the article, you probably would be very easy to find out who, who's heading it up in the state of Connecticut, how we can pipeline this information right into the student's home and, and get them to take history classes, get them to take some of these uh, uh, earth science type classes, uh, not the tough ones, but some of the easier ones at the moment and work our way in and build ourselves some dividends. We got to cut our t our taxes somehow, Mayor. And I, I haven't heard any any solutions coming out yet how you're going to cut taxes except for you're waiting for the Biden the Biden Lamont money to come in and then you're going to going to try to use some of that. Well, that's not cutting taxes. That's just taking that borrowed money that's going to hurt every everybody that has money in the bank or money in their pocket and dilute their dollars. So please give this some thought and, and, and let, let's let's hear some some information on this because I really think this has great potential. Same thing with the Keisha Farm. Turn it into a 55 plus community. Bring in some tax money from that. 
instead of putting a, some, like a school in there. We won't have to do that now if you went on and got this uh, virtual classes by Pearson or whoever you get it from. You wouldn't have to do anything like that. So anyway, but I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you, and I hope you hope to hear some good news. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Young. And just I'm actually reading the article in the current this morning. Back to the agenda. Um, and we have no further comments tonight. Mr. Evans, doesn't look like it. Nope, no one else on the list, sir. Okay. And then we've got no executive session. So can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second, to get the mayor to his kids' baseball game. Right. Yeah. Actually, I do have a Zoom. I might have to get on while I'm at that. So <laughs> double duty. Yeah. You got to vote. Yep. All those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. It would be funny if it failed, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I can take this I can take game. That. All those, uh, everybody said uh, uh, motion passes. Great. We should have texted each other and say, we're all going to vote no, right? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, all right, everyone. All right. Parliamentary jokes. Filibuster. <laughs> Filibuster on the vote tally. <laughs> to, to keep. Uh, I'll see y'all later. Have a great day, everyone. All right. Take care. Good night.